What's up guys, Asian here again with another build video and today we're going to be going over the gear you're going to need for a bow bow build. Uh, so bow bow builds are a little bit tricky to kind of work around uh, mainly because the bow counts as a two piece weapon set or in other words you only have one weapon on your front bar uh, and stamina dps do have a little bit more of a difficult time getting to the penetration cap of 18,200 compared to magic dps. Magic DPS have a passive on the light armor line, which gives them 4884 passive spell penetration, which does not exist on the medium armor line. So uh, it's a little bit more difficult for stamina DPS to get up to that level of penetration. If you see the CP setup for Magicka versus stamina DPS, you'll find that stamina DPS not only have to run a single sharpened weapon if you're running dual wield, but they also have to run a lot of points into piercing. Uh, so working around that is a little bit tricky for two-handed builds and bow builds because of that limitation there with penetration. But it is possible to get around it, uh, and so I'm going to show you guys today the sort of gear you're going to need in order to kind of get around uh, that limitation. So just like the rest of our gear video, uh, we will be strictly looking at gear. So you will notice that I am on a Nightblade, just taking a look at the skills down below. Uh, but that all those class-specific builds are going to be reserved uh, for their own separate videos. So I am aiming to do Nightblades, Wardens, and possibly Necromancers as well, to, uh, bow builds. Uh, if you guys are interested in looking at a Stamina, uh, Sork, DK, or Templar bow build, I'm certainly willing to do so, but those three classes don't seem to be as popular uh, for bow builds as the Nightblade, Warden, and Necromancer. So I'm sticking with those three first, and if you guys want the other three classes, just let me know down in the comment section below, and I will certainly uh, do my best to create builds, bow builds for those three classes. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, this is the gear that I am currently most likely going to recommend, although there, I'm still playing around a little bit here and there uh, with different sets. So in terms of Mars Helm sets, you are fairly limited in Mars Helm sets, and that's because we are playing at range as a bow bow build for the most part. Uh, that basically means we can't use Mars Lock because that is reliant on bashing things, and we can't use Selene's because the proc condition for Selene's is melee damage. Uh, on the other hand, we can potentially use Veladreth. The problem is, since we're playing at range, there is a possibility that whatever it is that we're trying to hit has moved out of the way of the Veladreth proc. So remember, the Veladreth proc summons three spores that shoot out, one going directly in front of you, and the other one's going at sort of 30-ish degree angles. Uh, so it is very possible for your Veladreth procs to actually miss the boss entirely, depending on what kind of fight you're dealing with. So the next best thing is going to be this setup that we have here. So we have one piece slime crawl for the weapon crit. It doesn't have to be slime crawl, it can be anything that adds additional weapon crit. You could also go with weapon damage as well, something like Mola Kina, for example. But the most important one is going to be the one piece crawl, which adds physical penetration. Again, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Two-handed and bow builds do suffer from the fact that we need to figure out a way to get our penetration values up because we don't have the additional penetration that magic DPS have. So this is our way of a able uh, of kind of increasing our penetration by running one piece Krog, and then either something like one piece slime prop for the weapon crit or one piece Molekina for the weapon damage. Now, of course, you can just use straight up Veladreth, but it's going to be a little bit more challenging because you have to make sure to aim the proc so it always hits the enemy. Another potential set you might be able to run on a bow build, although I don't personally recommend it too much, uh, is going to be Stormfist. So Stormfist, you can run this on a bow build because the proc condition is just that it, you have to deal damage and the proc effect itself does not is not limited to just being within melee range. Uh, so... Uh, this comes from Vet Tempest Island. Now, the downside of running Stormfist is, one, you're missing out on the penetration from Prog, so you're going to have to figure out a way to get the additional penetration, and two, you're missing out on weapon crit or weapon damage. You can see here Stormfist has stamina regen, which, well, it can be beneficial to, you know, boost your light attack ratio, so you don't have the heavy attack as often. It is going to be... It is going to be a DPS loss compared to running what I have, One Piece Slime Crawl and One Piece Krog. So you can run Stormfist or Veladreth, but your best bet is to run one Krog and then either one something like Molakina or one Slime Crawl. For body set, for single target damage, obviously we're still running Reliquin. Uh, Reliquin doesn't have any sort of limitation as to whether it's on a bow or it's on a melee weapon. Uh, so Reliquin is going to be your best option for uh, single target damage for things like boss fights. 
The second set that I'm wearing currently is Lakestis. Now, if you're in a situation where you need AoE damage instead of uh, single target damage, you can run Lakestis on the body rather than Reliquin, and then you could run a different set on the front bar here. Uh, but Lakestis is still a pretty solid set to run uh, here on a bow build as a front bar. Uh, now, you'll notice that with these two sets, we are still losing out on penetration, so we are going to adjust our CPs a little bit here to uh, account for that. Uh, and then we do have double bows, obviously, because we're a bow bow build. Now, we are running the Maelstrom Bow in the back bar, uh, so infuse with weapon damage enchant, as always. Uh, but you can run the Master's Bow as well and just use Poison Injection on the back bar instead. But the Maelstrom Bow is going to be better overall. Then for our front bar, we are running the Lacestis Bow. You want Precise, and we are still running double, da double uh, damage poisons because they're still going to be the best for DPS. Uh, in terms of the trait, uh, Precise is going to be the best if you are not a Necromancer, but if you are a Necromancer, you might want to consider running Nernhone, depending on what your weapon crit will look like in Execute. You don't necessarily want to push yourself above 100% crit in Execute, because then you're just wasting additional crit chance. Jewelry, as you can imagine, Bloodthirsty with weapon damage in chance. You can also go with Infused if you'd like. Uh, Bloodthirsty is, generally speaking, going to be the better trait, uh, but Infused does have its uses. The DPS difference is going to be fairly minor, and Infused is more useful in certain fights in the game. As in terms of armor traits, all divines, all mech stamina enchants, and they should all be medium armor. So you shouldn't be running anything like heavy or light here. You should be running all medium. Now, if you are concerned with the max health that you're getting, then you can run a uh, heavy piece here instead uh, for the anointed bonus, as well as the heavy armor bonus to your max health. Uh, so if you feel like you want a little bit more survivability, you can replace one of your monster helm set pieces with heavy. Uh, now, there are a few other sets that you might want to consider running here, uh, so we'll go through them one by one, starting off with dungeons, then moving on to overland, and then other trial sets. The first, running with dungeon sets. Uh, so, in terms of dungeon sets, uh, there is one that I've already pulled out, and I'll cover that in a little bit here, uh, but the first one is going to be Leviathan. This just adds just straight-up weapon crit. Uh, pretty decent. Uh, it is a base game set, so you can farm this easily enough from Crypt of Hearts. Uh, it's not going to be necessarily the strongest weapon set to run. Uh, it is a flat bonus, so you will need to make sure to run this onto a body. So you're only going to be able to really pair this with something like the Kesti. So for trash fights, it might be useful. Uh, but for single target fights, uh, Leviathan, you might want to avoid it. Uh, while the weapon grid is definitely very strong, you're still running into the same issue of uh, you're missing a little bit of penetration, so you're going to have to adjust your CPs to kind kind of account for that. Uh, next is going to be, I think that's the only one here. Uh, oh, I think there's one more. Uh, there's Scavenging Demise, which might be useful if you're kind of playing more support oriented. Uh, when you do a critical poison damage, you summon the Scavenging Maul, which deals a certain amount of poison damage and inflicts minor vulnerability for 15 seconds. There's a lot of sources of minor vulnerability in the game right now, uh, so it's not really necessary to run Scavenging Demise, but if you want something a little bit unique, you can certainly run this set, but it's definitely not going to pull any sort of record numbers. This is just sort of something that if you want to run, you can. Uh, it's not really going to make or break you. Uh, you can't really run Aegis Caller because that's a melee ability, and the other dungeon set that I've already pulled out because I was testing it out is going to be Sogman's Warband. Uh, so this is a DLC set that comes from Frostbolt. Uh, so you can see here that this does add a armor bonus of physical penetration. So if you're running Sogvins, you might be able to drop Krog to run Beldreth or Stormfist, uh, but if you're running it with Krog, then you can adjust your CP downs a little bit in order to account for the additional physical penetration. Sogvins is a very powerful set here for bow bow builds because of that additional physical penetration line there. When you do critical damage, you gain a stack of precision, increasing weapon crit by 129 for 10 seconds, up to 10 stacks max, so a total of 1290 weapon crit, which ends up being a little bit under uh, 6% additional weapon crit. Plus, at max stacks, you gain minor force, increasing your critical damage done by 10%. Now, this is pretty big because as a Bobo build, we obviously we aren't able to run Rearming Trap or Barbed Trap, as it is now called. We are going to have to resort to using either Lightweight Beast Trap or running Channel Acceleration or Race Against Time for our source of minor force. So with Sogmans, we're able to basically replace that one cast with another lethal arrow uh, or whatever your spam ball might be. So that just adds a little bit of additional comp uh, simplicity to our rotation as well as add a little bit of DPS uh, a little bit passively by giving us our spam ball, a uh, one spam ball back, which actually does make a little bit of a difference in your overall DPS. Uh, but those are your dungeon sets. Next for overland sets, uh, much like 
stamina dps that running dual wield there aren't really many overland sets uh most of them are going to be crafted sets uh so the first set i'm going to talk about let me see find it here it's going to be hunting's rage the tried and true uh so very standard just straight up weapon damage uh it doesn't add any sort of additional physical penetration so you're gonna have to be aware of that and adjust your cps accordingly uh, it requires six traits to craft so you can craft it yourself you can get somebody else to craft it for you, you can buy it off some off to the guild trader um and it is a base game set so it's pretty easy to pick up the next best set here is going to be new moon acolyte actually and that's partially because it has the additional physical penetration but also it just adds a bunch of weapon damage and now it does come with an increase in your cost uh, about five percent of all of your stamina abilities so just be mindful of that is going to be a little bit harder to sustain if you're running new moon acolyte this requires nine traits to craft so you have to be a master crafter of course you don't have to craft it yourself you can ask somebody else to craft it for you and pay them for their services or you can buy it off of guild traders so you do have a couple of options here when it comes to trying to obtain new moon acolyte new moon acolyte is actually a very popular set for trash builds essentially builds where you want more aoe damage so definitely a set i would recommend having on hand as a bow dps i also want to mention me like mechanical acuity here this is another uh, dlc set here so Newman Acolyte's DLC you can get it from Southern Elsewhere Mechanical Acuity is also DLC it comes from Clockwork City requires six traits to craft so pretty much if you can craft Hunting's Rage you can craft Mechanical Acuity now again like Hunting's Rage it does not have additional physical penetration so you're gonna have to adjust your CPs to account for that plus the three piece doesn't do you any favors because it just adds spell damage which we're not really concerned about so you're losing one armor bonus but the five piece is definitely great for burst damage uh, it basically gives you 100% chance to crit for five seconds every 18 seconds when you deal direct damage uh, so it doesn't require you to deal any sort of melee damage it's just direct damage so you can get this to proc on a bow build and it can be pretty interesting and fun to play around with especially if you're able to time your big damage abilities with that 100% crit uh, so you're like for example if you're able to time ballista correctly so you can get all of your ballista hits to crit it can actually be a really huge burst dps bonus there uh, so mechanical qd is definitely a set i would recommend taking a look at uh, it's not very common but it's definitely a fun set to play around with then for trial builds, not much. You already have Reliquin, you already covered Lacastes, uh, but there is one set I want to mention here uh, under a medium trial sets, and that's going to be Vicious Serpent. This is for base game players only. Uh, so this is the only way you can get Minor Slayer as a base game player, uh, so you could consider running Vicious Serpent. It's a very stat dense, so you get two weapon crit and additional weapon damage on top of the Minor Slayer and the stamina cost reduction on that five piece. So definitely one of the best options for base game players here. Uh, so combining something like Vicious Serpent with New Moon Acolyte is fairly common for sort of trash pulls in order to help out your sustain uh, to kind of offset the sustain from New Moon Acolyte. Uh, plus you get some additional stamina back whenever you kill something and you're still maintaining that Minus Slayer and you get some pretty good stats as well. It's definitely a set that I wouldn't necessarily sleep on, but if you do have access to the DLCs and other chapters, this set is going to be overshadowed by things like Lacestes and... Uh, Reliquin. Uh, but that pretty much covers it for all the sets. So as a Bobo DPS, you are fairly limited based on sets just because a lot of the standard stamina sets uh, usually stipulate that it has to be like a melee damage you have to deal or the effect is some sort of proc uh, that happens in melee range. Uh, so you are a little bit limited compared to your standard dual wield build here. Uh, as always, I have sets down in the description below so you guys can take a look at those as well as where to find them and what sort where you want to wear, whether it's a body set or you can wear something on the front bar etc now i do want to point out the master's bow let me see if i have it here the master's bow is pretty interesting so whenever you deal damage with poison arrow in this case poison injection you increase your weapon damage by 301 against targets that are affected by the poison arrow so your poison injection now because master's bow is a unique arena bow if you decide to run this with the maelstrom bow you will only have two five piece sets you won't be able to run one piece krog and one piece slime krog so while you can run the master's bow it does limit your options a little bit here you can certainly do so uh, you'd be able to run something like newman acolytes or sogvins with reliquin and you still be able to do pretty good dps with the master's bow uh, so it's kind of up to you how you want to play around with this so for example if you were to go with the master's bow here 
you would do something like this. So you would have the master's bow here. Then rather than running slime craw and Krogs, for example, I would just pick up my last two pieces of Akestis here and run it that way. Now the danger with doing that, so you can't really run the Kestis and Reliquin this way because you won't be able to hit the penetration cap. If you end up running masters with the Maelstrom bow, you will have to run either Numen Acolyte or Sogdens. Basically, you need to have one armor set bonus of physical penetration in order to meet the penetration cap if you go this route. If you don't, then you will be below the penetration cap at all times by about 1500 or so. So be very, very mindful of that. If you decide to run both Masters and Maelstrom, you are basically locking yourself into running either Togmans or Numen Acolyte. Uh, though both sets are pretty good, so it's not really a bad thing, but it is something you want to be aware of if you decide to go this route. Now for character sheets, pretty standard for stamina DPS. All your points are going to stamina. You should be running blue food. That's by stat food. Uh, stamina... Bow builds, generally speaking, have a little bit better sustain than dual wield. Uh, it is going to vary depending on class, but for the most part, you are you do have better sustain because lethal arrow is usually going to be a spamble, and that is a channel, so you have a little bit better sustain that way. Um, plus, the bow build is generally speaking are a little bit cheaper than dual wield, especially when you consider steel tornado. For race, your standard stamina races, so orcs. Dark Elves are going to be your best two options because they give you additional weapon damage, but you can run things like uh, Imperials or uh, Red Guards or even Khajiits. They all have their own bonuses, but again, Orcs and Dark Elves are going to be your best option if you're trying to maximize your overall damage. Same thing with Mundestone. Pretty much exactly what you would expect from Stamina DPS. You're still going with the Shadow. Uh, then for food here, I'm running by I'm running lava foot because I was doing some parsing earlier. But you should be running by stat food. So by stat food is going to be just plain health plus stamina. Now, if you are feel like you need some more sustain, your you know, by stats, you know, you're having a heavy attack a lot. You can run some other types of food here. So if you're tend to be on the cheaper side, you can run Dubis Caporn Throne. This gives you max stamina, max health, and stamina regen, but it does give you lower max health and lower max stamina. So while you are getting some sustain, you are losing some raw damage, and you are losing some survivability. So just be mindful of that. You might need to replace that max health somewhere, like a health glyph, or shift some points into your health attributes. If you have the money to spend, you can run Artem Takeaway Broth instead. So that just gives you, same thing, max health, max stamina, stamina regen. Gives you also health regen. It also gives you a little bit more max health and max stamina. So a little bit more padding compared to running Dubious Kamor and Throne. Uh, but again, these are foods you would run if you are having trouble sustaining with Bystat food. In an organized raid group with things like Mother um, and Master of Restoration Staff, uh, Symphony of Blades, uh, Orbs, and other synergies, you should be able to sustain Bystat food, but not all raids are well organized. So just have a couple of options there in case you need additional sustain. Finally, our champion points. Our CP is pretty similar to uh, your typical dual wield build, uh, but I do want to make a couple of notes here with blue CPs because there are a couple of configurations where you can shift your CP points around. So green CP is exactly what you would expect to see from a typical dual wield build. 100 to moon calf is the bare minimum you need. I have 75 tenacity, 31 shadow ward, 31 tumbling, and 33 warlord, or in this case bashing focus, but you can put it into warlord if you'd like. Uh, but you can shift your green CPs really however you'd like. So if you want to put some more points into, let's say, Warlord or Shadow Ward, you can certainly do so. It's kind of up to you where you want to put green CPs. The big thing is 100 into Mooncalf. Now for blue CPs, this setup is assuming you have one armor bonus with physical penetration. So in this instance, since we're running Lekestes, we have Le uh, Krog as our one armor penetration bonus. We have 49 Mighty, 61 Piercing, 56 Precise Strikes, 48 into Thaumaturge, and 56 into Master at Arms. You're going to want to put a little bit more points into Master at Arms, generally speaking, for bow builds, because Lethal Arrow does scale off of Master at Arms, and that is going to be one of your bigger DPS contributions, but you don't necessarily want to give up too much from Thaumaturge. So you might split it 52-52 if you'd like. That still hits the jump points, so it's kind of up to you how you want to do it. But I personally found a little bit better results. We're talking like a few hundred DPS uh, more when I had a little bit more just mastered arms compared to Thaumaturge. <laughs> For red CPs, we have 81 Ironclad, 61 Thick Skin, 64 and a Hardy Elemental Defender. This is taking that balanced approach. So if you're trying to maximize mitigation for a single trial, let's say Vmol for example, you will need to shift some red CP points around in order to maximize your overall mitigation. 
Now I mentioned that there is another blue CP setup you're going to want to consider. And that is with two armor penetration bonuses. This would be something like you're running both Krog as well as Sogvins, which is not entirely uncommon uh, to see. So with that, you get an additional 17, 1476 additional physical penetration, which means you can drop piercing down to about 3,000 or so. That actually brings you back to roughly 33, 32 additional piercing. So you can bump up Mighty back up to 64, bump Thaumaturge back up to uh, 52, you can bump Master Arms up to 61, you might as well bump Thaumaturge up to 56 here. So you can do something like this. Do something like this and gets precise strikes up to 61 you have a few options so your general uh, generally you're going to want to be anywhere between 32 and 33 uh, this will give you a little bit of leeway in case of downtimes on debuffs and things like that um, so you can kind of play around with this so in this particular instance 64 mighty 32 piercing 61 precise strikes 52 thaumaturge 61 master at arms again this is with two arm penetration bonuses so this would be krog with zogvins for example or uh, Sogvins with Numen Acolyte, if you decide to go that route, for example, or Krog with Numen Acolyte. You basically have two armor penetration bonuses, so you don't need as many points into piercing this way. Now, if you have no armor penetration bonuses, you're never going to be able to make the penetration cap. Even if you put 100 points into piercing, you're not going to reach the cap. So in that instance, just stick with a 61 piercing setup here, or go with Sharpened as a weapon trait, and then use the 32 piercing setup that I have here. Uh, and that pretty much concludes it for everything you need to know about bow builds pretty much across all of the different classes in the game. Again, we're not going to be going over any sort of rotations or skills for any specific class that is reserved for their class specific videos, which will be linked in the description below as they come out throughout this week. There will be one video every other day, starting off with Nightblades and then Wardens and then Necromancers. So over the course of the week, you will have those three builds. And again, if you want builds for the other three classes, DKs, Sorks, and Templars, Feel free to leave a comment in any of the bow videos, and if I see enough support for them, I will go ahead and make those builds for you guys. But that concludes this build video. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. As always, sets and builds are going to be in the description, so feel free to check those out. Again, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.